tutorial we'll be using Swelt, Swelt Strap, which is a bootstrap library, and the Speech API to build a website that speaks to you. I'll click on play and you'll be able to hear it. Hello, awesome. I can mess around with the rate so you can see what it sounds faster. Hello, awesome. Also increase the pitch. Hello, awesome. You can also decrease the Hello, pitch. Awesome. And we'll be uh, messing around with all this and learning how to do this in the uh, tutorial. All right, so let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is open up a new terminal and make this a little bit bigger. And I've got the Swelt website open, I'm gonna clear, and we're just gonna start. So we're gonna do MPX Digest, and then Swelt JS slash template, and I'm gonna do a dot to clone it into this uh, folder that I'm currently in. So I'm right there. And then uh, I'm going to do another clear and we'll do an npm install like so. So that'll be good. And then what we'll do is we'll go into here and we're just going to do some cleanup. I'm going to delete everything inside of here. I'm going to delete all the props because we don't need to pass any props. I'm also going to delete everything in our global CSS and in our index.html, I'm going to make all these relatives so that um, they'll work with GitHub. So we'll make that relative. We'll change this to speech synthesis. I can spell that right. There we go. For the title, and I think that should do it. So now that we have that done, we're going to need to install some dependencies. I'm using Swelt Strap, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that in and then if I go down here it says this is how we would include it or the CSS we could also do it another way but let's go oops let's go include it the way that they recommend or one of the ways they recommend which is in this head link so we'll go here and we'll just add a link above our global CSS so that our global CSS will override it so that's good so now we have that We've got our bootstrap, hopefully, in here. Let's just make sure, and we do. So that's looking good, um, and I think we're ready. So let's go ahead and run this. So I'll do an npm run dev, and we shouldn't see anything. Everything worked out, and that's good. So we've got a blank screen. All right, so I'm gonna close all these windows, and We'll start off with our app.swelt file, which is our main Swelt file. Cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a script tag. And I'm going to create, I'm going to import some things. So I'm going to import all of these things from Swelt Strap because we're going to need them. And I'm also going to import our on mount. So we're going to need that. And the first thing I'll attack is our on mount. So I'm going to say on mount. And what we're going to use the on mount for is getting the um, all the voices that we're going to need for our speech synthesis. Um, we're doing it on mount because we want to make sure the DOM has been loaded. So what we're going to do is we're going to say speech synthesis dot ch on voices change. And then we're going to set that equal to a function. So this will run when all the voices are loaded. And then we're just going to console.log just to make sure this is working. Speech synthesis.getVoices. And we just want to make sure that we are getting voices. And I'll add this voices right here. So I'm going to inspect element. And let's see. And it looks like we do have our voices. So I have 67 voices. Uh, you might have more or less. It's really dependent on your operating system. I think, from what I from what I can tell. So now that we have that, I'm going to create a variable called voices, and I'm going to set that equal to an empty array. I'm also going to create a variable called rate, and I'm going to set that equal to one, and I'm going to create another variable called uh, pitch that I'm also going to set equal to one, and I'm going to create another variable called volume that I'm going to set equal to one. And these are all um, options that you have when messing with the speech synthesis um, API in the browser. 
So now that we have all those variables, I'm going to say voices equal uh, speech synthesis get voices. All right. So that should give us a list of voices. And if I were to print that out, and I can do that, um, what I can do is, let me see, I can do an each voice as voices as voice, and then another each, and we'll just print these off in a P tag. Let me get the each right. So we'll just print the name of the voice. So I'll do voice.name, and you should see a bunch of voices. And yeah, so you can see them right there. So that's pretty cool. So that's working, which is great. So now what we want to do is start using Svelte Strap. So we're going to start building out our UI. So first thing we're going to have, just like in any um, a Bootstrap project, is a container. That container will have a row. And that row will have a column, and we're just going to have one column um, in this row, or in all the rows, honestly. And this will have an H1 that says, speak to me. So let's see what that looks like. That looks good. So the next thing we'll do is we'll copy that again. And this time we're going to do a form group instead of an H1. So we'll do a form group. This is just using the standard bootstrap stuff. And we'll do a label. And that label will have a for attribute. And this will just be called words. And we'll call this say something right here. And then we'll have an input. And this is the most common one. It's a type text. And we just see. And we're going to, oops, I forgot in this too also, we're going to need the most important variable, which is our text variable, which we're going to send to empty. And the reason I remembered that is because we're going to need to bind to that text variable right there. And we're also going to give it an ID of words so that it matches the label. So now if I go there, we should see, with any luck, uh, say something. So that's working. So now let's uh, copy this row and we're going to paste it in here and we'll go down to the next one and the next one is voices this is going to be a um, this is actually going to be a select for that so it's going to be a type select and we're going to bind to uh, the selected voice so i forgot to add that as well to our variable list selected voice and we're just going to set that to null and let's go down here. We're going to say selected voice. And we'll change this to selected voice as well. We'll say selected voice. Or we'll say voices still, yeah. Selected voice and selected voice. Or we'll just say voices. I think that makes more sense. And because we're doing an input, an input with a bunch of options. We're going to need to have a closing tag and then we're going to use an each. And we're going to say voices as voice and, and we'll just do that. And then these just take in regular options. So for the value, we're just going to say voice. And we can actually set it to an object, which is pretty cool. And then for the name, we're going to do something. We're actually going to create a function for that. And that function is going to be called print voice. Um, and the reason we're doing a function is that we want to standardize the way that we, um, we uh, show the voice. So I'm going to say voice. And I'm going to say if there's not a voice, because there might not always be a voice, we're going to return an empty string. Otherwise, we're going to print the voice. So we're going to return backticks voice.name and then in parentheses we'll do a voice dot I think it's lang which lang yeah so it's lang okay so we got our print voice and then we'll just do that here so we can just say print voice equals voice 
So let's make sure that works. That's looking good. Okay, so we've got our second option done. So that's good. Let's go down to the next one, which are going to be sliders. These will pretty much all be the same. Um, so we'll have a, another row. Just a little different. And this next one is for pitch. So we're not going to have this each option for pitch. And we'll change this to pitch. We'll change this to range because we want the type to be range. And we'll say pitch right here. Now we want the min value to be 0.1 because that's the minimum value. We want the max to be 2. So most of these are between 0.1 and 2. And then we're going to say the step equals 0.1. So they'll only be able to move it a tenth of a, basically one tenth. So let's make sure that looks good. And we'll set the value of pitch to be one. I think we already did that, so that's good. So the good news is, is that we're really close to being done. We just need to copy this a few times. So we're gonna have another one, and this one's gonna be called uh, rate, and that's for the speed. And we'll just change this up here and change this right here. And then we're gonna have volume. And this one's gonna be a little different because the max is only is one. And the volume is just gonna be defaulted at one. Let's make sure we change all our things. So let's make sure that looks good. It's looking really good. So it looks like we have our UI done. You can see how quick you can make a UI with boots. Uh, with Swelt Strap, which is really nice, especially if you're doing some rapid prototyping. So the next thing we need to do is create our play button. So that shouldn't be too bad. So we'll just manually do that. That's a row and a column. For some reason it does that. That's a weird bug. Okay, and then a form group. And then we're going to create a button. And this will have an on click. And we'll say it's the play function. And we'll give it a color of primary. And we'll just say play. Let's just see how that looks. And it's not working because we need to add our play function. So I should. Should have done that. Sorry about that. No big deal. We'll just create a function named play and just make sure that looks okay. Okay, that looks good. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to um, I want to print out what voice is playing and all that information. So we're going to add another row right here, and we're going to add an, a column right here. You guys get the drill. And then we're going to add, um, inside the column, we're going to add basically all this information. So I'll just copy and paste that in. So the pitch, the speed, the volume, and the voice. So you can see right now we don't have a selected voice. So that's an error. We can fix that really easily, though. We can just say selected voice equals voices zero, and that should fix that error. So that should now do what we want it to do. So that looks really good. Um, we could also, if we wanted to make this a little bit nicer, we could also maybe put this in a card, but I think for this uh, demo app, it's good enough. And then for text, I'm just gonna say hello, awesome. And that should automatically be reflected right here. So that looks really good. So play isn't working right now. Uh, that's because we need to write our play function. So let's do that. So it's really easy. So you just say let utterance equal new um, utterance, speech synthesis utterance. And we'll actually use a const for this because it's not because we can. And we're going to pass in the text for that. 
And we would say utterance.rate, and we'd say that pass in the rate, and then we do utterance.pitch, and we'd pass in the pitch. We do utterance dot volume voice. Oh, we need to do voice two, and we'd pass in the selected voice. Then we do utterance dot volume, and we'd pass in the volume. And then the other thing we need to do, and this is really important, is we want to do speech synthesis dot cancel to make sure we're not uh, that everything gets canceled if something's playing, basically. So sorry, I forgot to say that. And then speech synthesis dot speak is the actual API, and that should make it speak. So in theory, I should be able to press play, and you should hear hello awesome through my computer. Hello awesome. So I can increase the pitch and hello awesome. You can see that and hello awesome. That and we can also mess around with other voices. So you can do Fiona. Hello awesome. If I increase the rate, awesome. see that, and then we can also change the text too. So, uh, thank you for watching. I don't know. <laughs> thank you for watching. And we can slow it down too. Thank you for watching. We can also thank you for watching. decrease the volume as well. So. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Can't really hear the difference in pitch, but I might be tone deaf. So that might be why. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. So yeah. That's the uh speech synthesis API and the little Swelt app. Um hope you all enjoyed this. If you have any questions or feedback, please let me know. I'm also doing a new series. Um and I'd love for you all to be a part of. It's a uh, basically it's a de live debugging series. So if you have a problem with your Swelt code or any JavaScript or PHP code or any code like that, and you want some help, uh, I'll jump on a Zoom call with you and help you debug your code and post the uh, video on YouTube. So if you have any code trouble you want uh, live help with, uh, please let me know. I'll have links and descriptions uh, and email addresses for you to reach out to me. But I'll have links for all the information on here and all the descriptions. Also, if you want to give a talk at my uh, Swelt meetup, um, please let me know as well. I'll have a uh, email. Uh, basically, it's all the same email address, but I'll have my email address in the description. I hope you all have a great day, and thank you so much for watching.